Check this out. This is Panda. Uh, this is, tell them where they can find you in your Instagram. Bill Panda Supreme, pandamarie.com. She get that work in. Melissa, you can find me Mel Monroe on Instagram. And I'm Joe Crack the Dawn. This is Coca Vision live from El Chapo's Tunnel. You already know, this is exclusively on Tidal. We represent that video, Pick It Up, featuring Dre talking about that strip of life. And uh, you can go to Tidal, subscribe for free for three months, and check out the podcast there. Peace, y'all. Oh, drug tunnels under the border. Mexican cartels have dug them to funnel their product into our country. What up, my people? This is Joe Crack, live, Coca Vision, um, exclusive on Title. If you want to see these podcasts, you can subscribe for free for the first three months. Shout out to my people at Title, you know, showing us that love. Here we got a very special, because you know, we, we, we really talking about my new video with my brother Dre of Cool and Dre, Pick It Up, and it's based around the strip club. We made a strip club anthem called Pick It Up. You got to see it. You got to see it. I got my girl, Panda Supreme, who uh, is possibly the hottest chick in New York City when it comes to uh, bartending or whatever you want to say. I, I seen this shit get lit up. But we, we gonna talk about this. And this is our girl, Mel. Her girl, Mel, in the place from New York. Some beautiful young ladies. And uh, you know, I'm about that culture. You know what I'm saying? When you see my podcast, you're gonna learn something about street niggas. You're gonna learn something about jewelry dealers. You're gonna learn shit about producers, rappers, whatever the fuck is going on. You know what I'm saying? We might be talking about Donald Trump. So now, um, how y'all doing, ladies? How are you? Thanks how you doing? Thank you for having us. Um, you. Yes. Why you're the chosen one is I was in a club, it was Aces, and it was your birthday. Mm -hmm. And um Man, they threw so much money at you, you could have fucking fed like a small country or something. Mm -hmm. So I'm sitting there and I'm just like, damn. And you had like stickers on you that made you look like the panda. So your nick how you come up with the nickname Panda? Well, actually I came up with the nickname Panda from um actually my real name. I'm not gonna disclose that, oh, but it, it actually comes from my real name. Oh, so from, it's abbreviated, like yeah, Remy was reminiscent. Yes, it's a re it's an abbreviation of my real name. So that's how Panda came about. And it came about right. about 10 years ago. So we're going to be clear. Mel doesn't bartend. She used to before it was the bartend yeah. craze. So now this term strip club, the name strip club, is kind of like turned into the bartender club. Because as well as I was asking you, because we're hearing about this controversy between the bartenders and the strippers, you know, I was trying to find a hot strip in New York City. All my niggas, they own the strip clubs, and none of them could tell me one chick that was supposedly the hot chick. This is... Um, oh. I'm keeping it Can apart. I elaborate on that? Yeah. Okay, so as far as that is concerned, um, the, the bartenders feel like, you know, when we promote to our clients, we feel like that we're promoting to a, 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 a large scale of people that's going to come outside the club. Strippers don't want to be identified as a stripper, so they won't promote themselves to be a stripper. Mm. Bartenders, we don't have a problem. We don't have a problem. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up, mama. It got to be a hot bitch somewhere. A hot chick somewhere. They are, but like, not in New York. They're not in New York. They're not in New York. Right? They are so, somewhere, but not in New York. So when I'm looking at it from a guy's point of view, see, I always look at the numbers, right? And from a guy's point of view, I never saw how 1,000 niggas could go in a spot where there's only eight bartenders. Like, who's going to be fucking these bartenders? Like, it's 1,000 niggas. The number is, how do you, like, I don't see, you know, I, if, if it was vacant, all right, I well, told a nigga. All right, well, no let's, say, let's say we have 12 bartenders per night, and each 12 of the bartenders got at least 500,000 followers or more. We're promoting to our... I get, I, I get what you The dancers don't want to promote themselves. 
they don't want to be seen as a dancer. And I think what she's saying too is like when you're doing a show, you have a whole arena full of people and it's just one of you. It's just they want to be a part of what's going on and they want to be a part and witness like what people witness on social media with them. Right, you know what I mean? Right, so right. it's just like if you're not comparing your career to hers, but it's just like when you go on a show and it's only one of you, but all these people come out for you because they just want that one moment on their social media or just as a memory because you, you are what's, what's trending. You know what I mean? Okay. So you grew up, you have kids? I have a kid, I have one daughter, she's four. I'm sure she's beautiful. You got any kids? I have no children yet, no. So what I'm saying is, so you got a kid. Yes. So we teach these kids to be the next Beyonce, Michael Jackson, Michael Jordan, whatever, veterinarian, school teacher. At what age, what happened that you said, yo, you know what, I know you ain't stripping, but you showing a lot of shit. <laughs> Like, you had to tell your moms, yo, I'm going to the titty bar. Like, I'm just trying to keep it a buck. What, because if you got a guy like me, I'm going to be honest with you. And I made make it rain, but I'm really, and I made pick it up. But I'm really not technically a stripper type nigga. You know what I'm saying? I'm not in there like that. I'm not, I, it, it weirds me out. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes me, because I come with this virgin mentality, where I'm like, yo, what make this girl get naked and shake her ass? I'm just saying, at what point you said, yo, you know what? I don't want to be a school teacher. I don't want to be a this. I don't want to be that. I want to get this money. All right, well. Because it's obviously a money decision, right? It, it, it is a money decision. Um, when I first started uh, bartending, I was actually going to college. And I was going to be a teacher. I was going for education. And... Um, at the time when I was going to school, at the same time when I was trying to make money and survive, I was like getting calls, like, listen, you could do X, Y, Z to get this money. You could do a video, you could do this. And I'm in school and I'm like, I'd rather leave school. And was people was people bad influences? Well, let's not say bad, cause you're making a pretty good living, but people was throwing that in your head, yes. like, yo, why go and yes. do it? Why, why go do yes. four years when yes, you can get yes. this money right why now? Why go to school? Why go to college when you could go and make this quick money? Yes, they was doing that. Who have you seen as a stripper uh, really put that money away and really open businesses or really buy property? Like, have you met a stripper that, okay. I have seen, I will say I will, I will see in about like five. Like five that, out, of and all I, of, out of all the dancers that I have seen, I have seen about five of them go and like come up, and, become yes, business women. Yes, and become business women. Yes, and I get have. that money. Yes, I have seen that. I mean, yes. you know me. It's rare, but you do see it. I sold drugs, I robbed mm -hmm, people. Mm -hmm. I can't knock people's hustles. You got to pay your bills. You know, uh, we we love you guys. We go to see the shit. Know what I'm saying? See, it's an entertainment. See, people like to downplay it and make it seem like, oh, you're going to see a girl that's shaking her ass. But this is the same girl that's giving you entertainment for you. You know, you you get enjoyment. I'm not cool with. I'm, I'm not cool with entertainment that uh. I'm gonna speak for the fellas, but I'm not cool with entertainment that you can't necessarily uh guarantee you taking home or some shit like that. No, you. Like, you that's the thing. You can't guarantee that, it. Like, it's a sucker's yeah, bet. Yeah, like you know yeah. what I mean? So I watch girls. Dance on niggas, these niggas throw yeah. all their money, and, they and then, they, 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 then they don't love them no yes. more. Yes. They, they don't smile no more. They mm -hmm. gone to the net niggas like, damn, I done blew 1,200 on these bitches. Like, yo, what? I mean, nah, it's, 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 it's a true. serious. It's it's, it is. It is. It's a fantasy. And what I would like to say within the strip club. Do you think a nigga's a pervert if he's in the strip club every no. day? That's a question no. I need to be no, answered. No. Because all my life that's I felt it. like. That's what he likes. If that's what he wants to see, then that's what he likes. I don't want to be sounding. I don't want to sound like a square, but personally, me, you know, the reason why I tell you I get weird out of strip clubs because I feel like they beautiful women. I'm going to look at them, but I don't want no girl thinking like, yo, this nigga Fat Joe thirsty. He's like a, a horn bag or some shit. What the fuck he doing up here on a Tuesday? Don't you got shit to do? So you never looked at a nigga like that. I treat everybody that comes to my bar accordingly. If you come to buy a uh, Corona or you come to buy a space, I treat you accordingly. I don't treat anybody better than the next person. So right now, the bartenders have become, in the New York area, hotter than the strippers. There's been a controversy 
you know, the strippers against the bartenders. I'm like, hey, fuck it. Let everybody get their money, right? Hold up, right? So you used to do a little waitressing before it became hot to be like, you know what I'm saying? Before the million, what was the difference before? The difference before was that, so when I worked, Bartend, as a bartender, I didn't have to promote. I didn't have to go out my way. I didn't have to do like these pictures, these videos, or anything. Yeah. I was just. So even me and Lois, some girls that live in, the, some girls honestly do it and don't think it's right. So there's some girls that probably live in Connecticut that come to New York or Jersey, so they don't see their next door neighbor. Now hold up, how bugged out was you when you seen the guy you went to elementary school with and he looking at Panda Supreme and your titties is bouncing? Don't front on me. How weird was it when you seen the nigga that you was in free lunch with? No, I, I mean, it kind of bugged me out because they was like, yo, is it this you from blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, yeah, like, nigga. Because she's looking at it from the good way. Like, okay, I'm making like, money. Like, she I'm the shit, money. she got I'm him. Work, she with the shit. This is my job. Yo, my nigga, yo, my nigga, she got him. What allegedly was the biggest night you seen you or another bartender make on one good night? Um, I would say... I personally uh, have seen some typhoons. I, I, like, I, I, I mean, I, I seen the most... They said that Meek Mill came in through uh, $20,000 on my birthday. That's what they said he came in through. That was probably was one of the biggest. That yeah, that was probably that, that was that was the biggest I'll night. Him throw that on. Yeah, that was the biggest night of like my career, like because a lot of a lot of people. I was ready to sign you up against Beyonce. Some lot, shit. I said this bitch rich. Yo, my nigga, I ain't gonna lie to you. I said this bitch, she can fucking feed a continent, <laughs> a, 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 a fucking small country, nigga. Like, I was like, yo, if that's happening on a regular basis. I might have to be a bartender, Fat Joe or some I said, shit. I listen, I'm, I've been bartending for this many years, but shit, I didn't. That shit was lit. It I was, was there. It was. I ain't going to lie to you. I was there, and I was watching, and I said, that's why when I did the podcast, and it's based around the, the, the video, Pick It Up, I said, I got to have this girl here, because I personally never seen that with my eyes. I'm going to be, I'm going to be, good, good for you. But I personally, I never see that with my eyes. Sure, we all throwing money. You know, I know BMF uh, pretty much invented the making it rain. They shit was, yeah, nobody liked them. You know what I'm saying? And I actually made, and I'm gonna tell these niggas something. I made the uh, song Make It Rain based on them. So one night they was in the club and they was throwing money. At that time, niggas wasn't throwing money. So they was throwing money. And my man was like, yo, look at these niggas, they throwing all this money. And I was like, yo, this shit, it's like these niggas is making it rain in this bitch. This shit was like, you know, this is the beginning cast. I came up with the name, right? So I said, oh shit, these niggas making it rain. I went back to the studio that night with Scott Storch and uh, I made the record, Make It Rain. And it was cause I seen this shit like drizzling. So I, let's be clear, I don't think nobody I don't think, I'm sure there's a lot of hustlers everywhere, but I never seen nobody make that type of motion picture. Your shit was like a mini you know, one at all. I felt like I was standing on the stage for like an hour. And you were sweating so much. I danced for a whole hour. No, I was like, you were sweating so I was, much. I was. You had friends wiping you down like, bitch, keep dancing. <laughs> I seen that shit. I don't get high. I was like, bitch, yo, give another shot. Come on, let's go. And I was like, let me let me tell yo people, time. listen. I seen it. I don't get high. So I'm very observative. So I'm watching them wiping you down. And I watched one of your friends tell you, bitch, keep going. <laughs> like you was tired. It was like 45 minutes cardio, my nigga. She bouncing her shit. She bouncing her shit. I watch your friend wipe you down and be like, bitch, don't get off this motherfucker. Keep going. Keep, I watched it. Am I right? Am I correct? No, you are correct. You I'm, are. I'm sober. You are. You are. I don't get high. No, I'm, I'm sober. sober. As well. No, I don't know. But listen, what I'm saying to you is I was watching that shit dead ass sober and I watched your homegirl look at you like, like Rocky and shit, like the nigga coach him in the corner. There was so much money. Like this. Yeah. Relax, don't, all right? Just breathe. Don't play your fucking L Yeah, just twerking. breathe. Just keep going. I was like... Keep fucking twerking. And McMill was like... It wasn't just him, the whole club. It, yeah, it was, it was... He was the leader of the show. 
Oh, he came I, in there to act I, I up. Well, it was a lot of niggas throwing money at you. Oh, a good dad. No, it was a lot of niggas. Nah, you was you was like in the twelfth round. I seen that shit. You know what I'm saying? And I was, um, do you ever do you have hope for the stripper comeback in New York City? No. Cause this, you don't have hope no. for the stripper comeback. No. Damn, could you elaborate on that one? Oh, well, I would say um, a lot of, yeah. I don't, don't want to say it like this, but a lot say of niggas, no, a lot of niggas crack. got killed. Behind uh, strippers? Behind just the game, just having a lot of money. A lot of niggas that had a lot of money, they, they got killed or they went to jail. All right, but what I'm trying to say is the stripper. Uh -huh. Like, it's embarrassing that my mans own every strip club in New York City. We got one on one. Shout that, out my nigga Manny from Scandals. Hold up, money. hold up. And them niggas couldn't find a hot stripper. They had to bring me the bartender. Cause there's no so I'm like, who is a right stripper? Now. All right, so do you do you wish for I a wish. hot stripper? I wish. Camera, I wish. Coco I wish. Chanel. Yes, I wish for a hot stripper. That's I what wish. I was. That's what I was saying. I wish for a stripper. I don't want stripper. the people to take it wrong because no, this shit no, going no, a million. No, 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 no. I wish for a stripper to come in the game and show us what it's like for a man to love the dancers for who they are again. I wish. I want to see that. I would she love to shit, see that. Nigga. I would love to see a badass. I, at woman what point you? In. At what point you realize? I need the most down point where you where, where you looked. And you, what what is the point where someone has looked down upon you? Maybe it's a family member or something where they looked at you and they said, "Man, this bitch naked." Like I know if I had a cousin, I say, hey, titties out. I'm just saying. I know a lot of family just, members. I got family members direct that you even know. Listen to me. Uh -huh. What I'm trying to tell you is at what point. Somebody tried to look down upon you and it hurt your feelings when you was like, damn, why they come at me like that at a Christmas party or Thanksgiving or, or something like that? You got to understand, there's a lot of square niggas out there. So I'm trying to I give mean, it to them. I, I I'm trying to give them I that mean, game. I, deal with it. I mean, I deal with it daily from my family members or like, I'm even engaged now and I still deal with it where people look at me and they, they judge me and they me think see, that... Let me see the ring. And they think that, and they think that, you know, this, that all I deal with is like maybe football players or rappers. I see the nigga rappers. get engaged on Shade Room today. A nigga got engaged to a stripper on stage. The nigga that, the, 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 the nigga was like, I'm in love with a stripper. Like, I swear to God, on Shade Room. I don't know where they taking it to at this point right now. So congratulations, you engaged. I'm gonna tell you from experience, The Rock is beautiful. But it might get even bigger during the years. If you encourage this man to keep working hard, get money, and he appreciates you for who you are, that rock might get a lot bigger. I'm telling you, because I know I've expanded rocks. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I'm, 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 I'm proud of that for you. Um, you. I'm going to throw you a wild question that I ask everybody. Mm -hmm. sure. Donald Trump. Oh, God. I mean, Hold up. No. Yeah, At what point? I want to know what the fuck. You know, the panda got to say about Donald Trump. Absolutely. At what point, what was the lowest point of some shit Donald Trump did that you was just like, oh, I can't take it? All right, well, recently he just said that, um, what did he say? Haiti's that, a shithole, Africa. Africa. It, it took you to recently to figure that one. It didn't take No, but this was a big one. But this was a big one only because my fiance is actually an immigrant in, of Africa and he's gonna get deported. And it, it, it took me to... What you gonna do, move to Africa? Yeah. You gonna move to Africa? Yes. I've been to Africa. You been I'm, to Africa? I'm gonna move to Africa. What part of Africa? Ghana. Huh? Ghana. Ghana's a nice place. You might be good. They got palm so trees it, and it all that. I've been to Ghana. To... It took to that low blow? It took me to that low blow for me to realize, like, Donald, not, not, I didn't realize, I, I realized that Donald Trump was not for our country, but for the simple fact that I have to directly deal with immigration myself, and I'm still a citizen, but I have to deal with it with my fiance, yeah. it showed me the, the realness. Well, hip hop was based on yes. speaking for the voiceless. Mm -hmm. So that's what's happening now. Like, you know, like me, I just posted some shit about the dream is today to where I'm not Mexican, I'm not a, I'm, I'm, I'm American, but I got to speak for my brothers and sisters who's really fighting and they deserve to be here and they work hard and they do jobs nobody else could do. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump. Oh my God. Since, I mean, Puerto Rico was just disgusting yes. what he did, throwing like yes. 
Even those paper towels. I'm not gonna lie, I ain't like Donald Trump since his first speech for presidency. I ain't hate him before that, but the Puerto Rico is what turned me into fuck Donald Trump mode. I'm gonna keep it real. And, That's, and I want to know what's the worst part. It's not his actual action. It's that after it was said and done, he didn't feel like nothing was wrong with it. Like, it's not like he thought about it and came to his senses and, and apologized to the country, you know, and said, you know, I'm sorry. Maybe it was, you know, unnecessary. But he really felt that he did the right thing. But just Donald Trump, if you go back to when President Obama was, you know, president, he has enough to deal with, with the, in, the, in the world as the first black president, the first president who's like, who, who is the most who has the most um, attempted assassin, uh, assass Did who has the most assassin assassin yeah. number one, uh -huh. President Obama, who had number mm -hmm. one assassination yeah. attempt. Yeah. So he has all these things going on, that. and here uh -huh. comes Donald Trump and this whole mess and trying to really prove an his ethnicity or like where he's from. So since that, and even before then, being a New Yorker, you know that Donald Trump, as a businessman, he has failed multiple yes. times. Like yes. has went bankrupt. Yes. And so I go, mm -hmm. I go all the way back. But honestly, like today, it's like, it's our country that has to accept the mistakes they've done to put this position, this this man, not only as president, but even to put him as in a position to run for it. You know what I mean? For him, to, like it's just no, they so can it goes run. Bad. They can run. They, everybody got the right to run. You could be a former drug dealer and run. That ain't the the question. Is how we elected this nigga? How this nigga got elected? And um, now he just keeps shitting on everything we thought we stood for. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to ask you one more question before mm -hmm. we go. Um, I love Dave Chappelle. I was actually the first rapper to be on Dave Chappelle. Um, so the, a part of the show that, that, that I love was called When Keeping It Real Goes Wrong. Mm -hmm. Y'all remember that shit? Mm -hmm. So what in the strip club you ever felt that you kept it real and it went wrong Bad, the worst moment that you felt like, yo, I wish I could take that back or I could, uh, or I regret that. I don't even know. I'm trying to think. What went wrong in the strip club that I wish I could take that back? Hmm. Chick you co-signed for, you know, you shouldn't have left with them niggas for the private party. You know, I'm just trying to throw oh, some shit in um, one time we we had co-signed for some guys that would you know they sat at our bar and we had to end up paying like two thousand dollars back from it. Why and they were scammers? Yeah, they were scammers. And you thought they was good people? Yeah, we, we, we thought they were really good people and we thought they they were our friends and you know Those me and my partner we yeah we, we we ended up co-signing for for them at Starless and we we told our managers hey we know these guys they're good blah blah. blah. And long story short, we still ended up paying two thousand dollars back to the club out of our own money. That's the cosign. That's when keeping it real goes yeah. wrong. Yeah, that's when keeping nah. it real goes wrong. It goes wrong. Yes. Oh my God! As a bartender, one choice I remember making this one night was giving this la this man his last drink, and everybody's telling him, me, "Oh no, he doesn't need it. He doesn't need it." And I'm like, "No, he could take it. He's good. I know him." Oh my God! Next thing you know, we go to the bathroom. He's like bent over, like pants around his ankle, like done shitted on himself, like done everything. And I and everybody's looking at me like, "Melissa, I told you he didn't need that last drink." I'm like, "What? He didn't need that last drink." Okay. Uh, I would say in the strip club, when keeping it real goes wrong. Uh, one time it was around Christmas time, and I made so much money in Africa that I came back with like about 70 racks to Sin City, and I threw it in the air, and boy, I regretted that the next day. <laughs> no. That was when keeping it real goes wrong. Now, nah, I mean, she said 20, I threw 70 like an asshole one time. Jeez. And the next day I woke up, I was like, yo, they wrote about that shit in the Daily News. I was like, yo, my nigga, this was, we <laughs> overdid it. <laughs> Keeping it real yeah. went wrong. When I had to buy them Christmas presents the next day, I was like, what the fuck? I blew all my shit. Check this out, this is Panda. Uh, this is, tell them where they can find you in your Instagram. Real Panda Supreme, pandamarie.com. Get that working. Melissa, you can find me Mel Monroe on Instagram. And I'm Joe Crack the Dawn. This is Coca Vision live from El Chapo's Tunnel. You already know, this is exclusively on Tidal. We represent that video, Pick It Up, featuring Dre talking about that strip of life. And uh, you can go to Tidal, subscribe for free for three months. 
and check out the podcast here. Peace, y'all. Pick it up, pick it up.